This is the Cardus Mine 2S, a small form factor computer that has impressive specs, a very interesting selection of accessories, and a promising roadmap. But at a cost of £1,500 at the time of recording this video, is this the future of computing or an overpriced gimmick? Let's find out. This tiny box, only slightly larger than a modern iPhone or Android smartphone, is the Mine 2S. Inside we have an Intel Ultra 255H which has 16 cores and can boost up to 5.1 GHz. It also has a whopping 64GB of RAM and 2TB of NVMe storage. That's a lot of power packed into such a tiny form factor. For comparison, my gaming PC has a Intel 13700KF and 32GB of RAM with the same amount of storage. With some quick googling and chat GPT math, it turns out I could theoretically fit 96 of these into my Fractal North case if it were empty. Somehow, I don't quite see that adding up, but you certainly do see the size difference. This computer is unique in the sense that it's basically a laptop without the screen and keyboard. You can either run it as it is with a 65 watt charging brick and just add your own peripherals, or plug it directly into their proprietary dock or graphics dock. Alternatively, you could do what I've been experimenting with and plug it straight into a Thunderbolt 5 dock. In theory, this sounds amazing and I absolutely love the idea of this product. It also has a built-in battery so when you undock it, it puts the computer to sleep, meaning you should have plenty of time to move between your main setup and wherever you decide to go without needing to boot everything up again. But what's it like to actually use? Well, I've had quite a stressful time with this product. Setting it up was incredibly slow. I'm talking about 45 minutes from pushing the power button to actually getting into Windows. I'm not sure if this was an issue with Windows or the Mind 2S throttling itself, but I have a one gigabyte internet connection and it should not take that long to set up on modern hardware. I was, however, very pleasantly surprised to see there was zero bloatware installed. I really welcome this decision by Cardus and I think all manufacturers should do the same. One thing I do have to talk about is the noise. I've tested this in multiple environments, at my desk, plugged into my CalDigit TS5 dock, on its own, and using the Cardus Mine graphics dock. I've mainly been running it with two desktop resolutions, 4K 144Hz using my monitor, and 1080p 240Hz when plugged into my projector. No matter how I've set it up, it's painfully loud, I'm not sure if I have a faulty unit or I'm just spoiled by the silent operation of my MacBook Pro, but this thing screams from the moment you turn it on, and it gets very hot, even when idle. I've seen CPU temperatures peak at 104 degrees. Gaming on this is strange. It's all over the place. The Mind 2S on its own will never game smoothly at 4K on any decent graphic setting. I booted up Overwatch 2, which is a well-optimized game and attempted to play it in 4K. I could barely hit 40 FPS. It had constant freezes and stuttering. If you drop the graphics quality and resolution to 1080p, you can get acceptable frame rates, but only on low to medium settings. Plugging the Mind 2S into the Mind Graphics, which is essentially a Thunderbolt GPU enclosure with a load of extra ports, changes things for the better, but it's still not perfect. For example, Cyberpunk 2077 can somehow play at 4K at over 100 FPS with DLSS turned on very smoothly. And Overwatch, I was getting over 160 frames per second in 4K ultra settings with incredibly smooth gameplay, which I will say might even rival my main gaming PC. Another title, Jedi Fallen Order, which I dropped to 1440p resolution, ran awful. Every time I swung my lightsaber, it would skip frames and act all jittery, despite claiming that I was gaming at over 100 frames per second. I think it would take a lot of tweaking in various games to get smooth performance, and you'll constantly be sacrificing graphics quality or resolution in order to obtain this. I also suspect CPU thermal throttling plays a huge role in these gaming issues, and it's one of the downsides of the Mind 2S. Taking a quick pause in this review, I'd like to thank Delta Hub for sponsoring this video. Their range of ergonomic wrist rests, desk mats, and Holdex magnetic mounts are the perfect upgrades to your desk setup and everyday tech carry. The wrist rests are products I've personally used for years and have featured on many of my desk setups. 
They're designed to elevate your wrists, reducing stress on your joints, and cut down the risk of developing carpal tunnel. The built-in skates let you effortlessly glide across your desk, and they come in both left and right-handed models in two sizes. When combined, you can have one for your keyboard and one for your mouse. The desk mats are available in both neoprene, which is perfect for gamers looking for a resistance-free mousepad, or felt for those who want to add a bit of style to their desk. For the traveling creator, the Holdex magnetic mounts are a simple but great way to get rid of the mess that comes from using external drives or hubs. Stick one to your laptop, another to your device, and clip them together. There's no more banging your mouse into them or dangling them off the side of a coffee table. If you want to find out more about all of these and more, click the link in the description and visit the Delta Hub website. Now, back to the review. The very idea of a graphic stock is really cool though. Cardus have taken the concept of a classic Thunderbolt GPU enclosure and added a whole host of extra ports, built-in speakers, and a fingerprint reader. But unlike traditional enclosures, you can't replace the graphics card, and right now, it's only available with a 4060 Ti in either 8GB or 16GB variants. I would absolutely avoid the 8GB version, always go for the 16GB variant. 8GB simply isn't enough for modern gaming, and for the little extra it costs, it's absolutely worth it. Pricing? Well, it's not cheap. The 8GB model is £910 and the 16GB model is £1099. When you compare that to the standalone price of a 16GB 4060 Ti, which you can buy for as low as £450 at the time of recording, it feels steep. However, if I were to play Devil's Advocate, you are getting a Thunderbolt 4 dock, which alone can cost £200 to £500, pounds, plus a graphics card with a proprietary bridge that interfaces with a Mine 2S that's faster than the standard Thunderbolt 4 connection. On paper, it sort of balances out. In reality, it's complicated because, like the Mine 2S itself, this cannot be upgraded. You're essentially buying a Thunderbolt dock with a future paperweight inside. Productivity-wise, I didn't even attempt to work on this without the Mine graphics, as my daily workflow is content creation heavy and benefits greatly from hardware acceleration. Whether it's editing HDR photos in Lightroom Classic or creating videos in Premiere Pro, these apps are quite demanding. For photo editing, 16 gigabytes of RAM has always been the recommended minimum that you should use. Personally, I'd say 32 gigabytes is the bare minimum, as I'm always constantly being bottlenecked on my MacBook Pro. The Mine 2S with its 64 gigabytes of RAM made photo editing incredibly smooth. Video editing, however, is a mixed bag. Playback and timeline scrubbing are responsive, but rendering isn't the fastest I've experienced. For example, exporting my latest desk setup video on my M1 Max MacBook Pro is completed in around 8 minutes, and the Mine 2S with the graphics stock took a little over 12 minutes. Not terrible results, but if you're a professional churning out multiple projects daily, it does add up. That said, I'll give credit where it's due. The Mine graphics enclosure never overheated, it performed consistently during long renders and gaming sessions, unlike the Mine 2S itself and I do have to give even more credit for including a fingerprint sensor. It works perfectly with Windows Hello, so logging in is just as easy as it is on my MacBook Pro. There are other minor frustrations I've come across. For example, my mouse cursor randomly disappears and doesn't return for a few seconds sometimes. Uh, my gaming controllers like my DualShock 5 randomly disconnect various times throughout a gaming session. There's times where the Wi-Fi has been incredibly slow, and the sleep-wake function doesn't always work correctly, and of course, the high CPU usage. And the biggest, most worrying issue? Cardus hasn't updated the 4060 Ti drivers since August 2024, despite new versions being available. Worse, the Mine graphics doesn't seem to be able to download driver updates through NVIDIA's app. You have to manually search them out, download them, and then install them yourself. It's a strange oversight, and I can't understand why the NVIDIA app doesn't work with the Mind graphics unit. When I'm not gaming, there are no deal-breaking problems. I can create content, edit photos, and do day-to-day -day tasks just fine. It's impressive when you focus solely on the fact that something so small can do all of this. But the price for the Mind 2S on its own is £1,500. That's absolutely bonkers for something that thermal throttles, has no upgrade potential, and requires a £1,000 add-on to be a complete package. For that money, you could build a custom small form factor PC, bigger in size, yes, but still portable with far better thermal performance and overall value. 
The only way I see the Mine 2S becoming truly compelling is if they were to slash the cost, release more accessories like the teased monitor, and allow a graphics dock where you can use your own GPU. I was really hoping this small computer would be an absolute powerhouse and perform better than my current PC, as I would have loved to throw my RTX 3090 into the Mine graphics and shrink my PC down in size. So who is it for? Well, AI is all the rage and Cardus seem to be marketing this to AI professionals and people who move between offices and want a compact workstation. I can see this working for those types of people. But honestly, if you're not gaming, just buy a MacBook or a Mac Mini. They'll do AI workflows just as well, they're portable, and in my experience, perform better for far less money. Now, I have been harsh on this product and I have no regrets. I absolutely love the concept and really wanted to like this computer as the whole form factor and size is really appealing to me and it saves so much room compared to a regular size gaming machine. But the price and the issues I've encountered do it no favours. I really hope Cardis takes this feedback on board, cuts the costs, allows upgrades, dramatically improves the thermals and cooling system and can give us a mine graphics that's just an empty shell so we can add our own GPUs. Then, and only then, might they have the ultimate portable workstation.